This is a uh, Ilford Obscura pinhole camera. It's large format and inside I've got some photographic paper because I wanted to make a paper negative. Just a wooden box which slots together like this and uh, got a pinhole on it. You open and close it. It has an aperture of something like 250 something. It's a slow slow process. Looking up about paper negatives that's kind of appealing to me. And I've seen some really really lovely results. And because I'm on a low budget I don't want to be using expensive chemicals or anything like that. So I'm going to be using caffeinol, caffeinol P. Caffeinol P for paper, developing with coffee. You know, good old coffee. So the exposure time for this is 45 minutes and I'm only about seven minutes in. So I'm going to sit and enjoy my coffee, not caffeinol, but coffee, and uh, block the wind from the camera to stop any shake. And uh, I'm going to stop this video, enjoy my coffee, and I'll show the image. Just in my garden, we've got our first snowbells of the year. So I thought I'd give that a go. It's about a 45 minute exposure. As you can see, the uh, snowballs are moving because it's a bit windy. So probably not gonna be a very good photo, but at least I'm gonna have the uh, texture of the statue of, is it Miss Tiddywinkles? I can't remember her name, from uh, Beatrix Potter. Having a little cup of tea there. So this caffeinol pea recipe is basically, I would have one liter of water in here, 23 grams of soda crystals, 30 grams of instant coffee, 20 grams of vitamin C powder, or tablets, but if you use tablets, you have to grind them down. And you have to do it in that order. First one would be soda crystals, make sure they dissolve. Then you add the coffee, make sure that dissolves. And then you add the vitamin C, give it a good old stir and make sure it all dissolves. Probably let it stand for about a couple of minutes or so. Hopefully the exposure came all right. The good thing about this is that you can just open it up and plop it straight in the solution. So I've got my caffeine on, P. Let's put it in and start to agitate. I think I see something already. That's good. Yeah, some are coming. So yeah, in comparison to conventional developing liquids that you would get from say places like Ilford, it's not as rapid, but it's better for the environment and it's cheap. It's quite nice. It makes you feel like you're actually creating something yourself rather than just letting the camera do everything or letting a lab do it. And there's some avenue for creativity. It's a very hit and miss affair. But that's part of the charm. It could do with being a little bit more. But it's developing, so that's good. My dark room is a toilet because this toilet has no window. So it's completely pitch dark in here. A torch. And any old trays that I find. This is one of those trays you get when you buy mushrooms. I'm just using that as my stop, which is water. And then I'll make some fixer solution with salt water in a bit. Give it a little bit more and I'm gonna put it in the water. Switch the light on, take a picture. 
check it and then if it's not enough I'll throw it back in so in the water it goes and then I'll take a picture invert it see if it looks all right So I thought I'd just go through the negatives and talk about them a little bit. So here's the first one of the log. As you can see, the cathanol has really, really stained it quite significantly. This log wasn't the first image I took with the Obscura. It was actually this one here, which is a picture of my father-in-law's battered old shed down the bottom of our garden. I thought I would take a picture of something that has some kind of happy memories, if that makes sense. And of course, here's the picture with Miss Tiddywinkles with the snowbells. As you can see, everything is in reverse because it's a negative. And what you would do, you would scan it, then you would obviously flip it and invert the colours and then you would get a better idea of what the image would look like. So another one I'd done for memory's sake was a, a picture of a number three sign here outside my house. My dad painted this many 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 years ago. I was going to repair it but I decided to leave it and see if it outlives me. So uh, yeah and I was quite happy with this one actually, it came out really sharp, it exposed correctly, so it was quite a, quite a good one, this lined up nicely. So another one that came out pretty well, I decided to do the tree again, again having the pinhole camera facing right up to the tree, and it came out pretty nice, it's got a kind of a look, the thing is about these paper negatives, particularly with caffeinol, is that if you took the same image twice and developed them in caffeinol, each image would probably look different. It's just the nature of it. But the look of paper negatives with the caffeinol gives kind of a timeless, creepy look. Artistically speaking, it would be very suitable for, you know, Halloween type spooky photos. It would work very well for things like woodlands, derelict buildings, um, things in decay, but also flowers work quite well. And I'll show you the next one. And so out in our garden, we uh, have some cherry blossom growing on our tree. So I decided to take an image of this and this came out quite nice. I was quite pleased with this one. It's got a very soft look about it. Now, the other thing I should point out about these, you notice how, depending on how long you leave it in the coffee, or how little or how more coffee you put in it, how stronger the staining is in comparison. So for example, this one developed very, very quickly. So as a result, I didn't have to leave it in for so long. So it doesn't look anywhere near as bad as this one. But this came out just about the way I wanted it. And it was very uneven, even though this is just all clear sky. When the caffeinol developed it, it just kind of gave an unevenness to it. Some people use paintbrushes, so I might give that a go at some point. But yeah, very happy with this one as well. Now the paper I'm using is this Ilford multigrade and this is a resin coated paper and the other one I've tried but had very bad results with is the direct positive paper. The difference between using this paper and a direct positive paper is that you will get a negative with this but you'll get a positive with this. But the problem with this it doesn't really work very well with the caffeinol recipe I've been using. It takes a very long time to develop most of the time it comes out really dark. I'll give you an example of that. 
So for comparison, here's the negative, and here's the direct positive paper. And as you can see, it's really, really, really dark. I exposed it exactly the same, but yeah, it didn't come out as well. But this is what happens with the direct positive paper with Kavanaugh. It would be better if he was using proper developing liquids from, say, Ilford, for example. Uh, I mean, it, it looks all right, but I don't really like the texture of this paper because it's a uh, fiber-based paper. It feels more like a fabric. And um, I find the coating very, very sticky. And it's got a texture to it as well, which if you scan it, kind of picks up. So for scanning, I, I'm using this light table here and then using a DSLR and then putting it into Photoshop, invert the colors, and then I go into Lightroom and then just make the final adjustments. Another technique you can do is take this piece of negative you've got here, get another light sensitive piece of photographic paper Put them together face down like that, shine a light on it, and then put the newly exposed piece of paper into your solution to develop. I haven't really had great results with that. I gave it a go, but that's the result. Because I don't have a proper dark room with all the gear that's required in one, um, I just have to try and judge it and I did like a 10 second exposure on this but it didn't seem to be enough. I mean I might get it right if I keep trying but I don't want to waste the paper so I'd much rather just stick with making a negative and then scanning it and then filling about with it for the final image. But it's a nice cheap solution to self-develop in yourself and getting yourself a nice large negative out of it. So if you want to do this, you have to get this kind of paper, this light sensitive photographic paper that you know you would use in a dark room. The kind of paper you would get for inkjet printers, that's not gonna work. So don't be thinking that you know you're gonna be able to use something like that or any old normal papers. You need to have the proper stuff. But these are not too expensive. I mean, I've just bought a pack of 100 for £17, which is going to last me a good few years, I think, because with this kind of thing, I'm just going to do it on occasion, on a weekend now and again, maybe once a month, maybe twice a month. But I really, really enjoyed it. It's really, really a lot of fun. A lot of fun doing this. Kind of satisfying feels like you're actually creating something more so than say with an instant camera um, so yeah really really get in the bug you can also put instax film in which i did here it came out upside down and it was a bit too overexposed uh, i probably won't be doing that too often um, but i thought i'd give it a go Basically, you have to be in complete darkness for that. You have to fumble around and then put it in the camera, take your image, fumble around again, get it back into the cartridge, put it in an Instax camera and then print it out with that. There's plenty of other videos about this, but yeah, I'm not really going to do this, but I thought I'd give it a go. So yeah, I kind of like this box. There's a couple of negatives I'll say about it. One, this mechanism makes the camera shake a lot. So I tend to cover the pinhole over as I'm doing it. And then once the motion stopped, I can take it away. Um, what else can I say? One of the other kind of cons is that you're limited to only one image. So you'll put your paper in here or your film and then close it up. You go and take a picture and that's it, you're done. 
um, with other cameras like 4x5 cameras you'd have film holders that you can slide in and out and take out and so you can take as many pieces of film or paper but for me this is perfectly fine you know I'd much rather just take an image now and again I mean this is not really something I'm going to use all the time but I'm certainly going to be using it because I really like the results out of it. It's got an interesting look, particularly with the caffeinol and the paper negatives. I kind of like it. Something else to mention about this, it comes with this nice chart. Now, this paper is rated at ISO 6, so to give you an idea, there you go, ISO 6. If it's a cloudy day, a really cloudy day, your exposure would be around about 30 minutes, to give you an idea. Well, on a sunny day, it could be around 30 seconds. With the paper, you don't have to worry about reciprocity or anything like that. You just expose for ISO 6, and it seems to work perfectly fine. On a final note, the caffeinol recipe that I've mentioned earlier in this video, I modified it a little bit because these are only 4x5. I didn't need so much solution, so I halved everything. So at the end of the video, I'm going to show you what I use for my caffeinol recipe for 4x5 paper negatives. And it seems to be working for me every time and it only takes about five minutes to develop. Another thing to keep in mind, if you're getting coffee, get the cheapest, nastiest coffee you can find. I mean, here in the UK, we've got Lidl and Aldi's and they sell jars of coffee for something like 80 to 90p. Perfect. You're not after quality coffee here. You want crummy, nasty tasting, cheap, instant coffee. Not ground coffee, instant coffee. So, cheapest, nastiest coffee, soda crystals, salt, and vitamin C, and you'll be good to go. So why not give it a go? I recommend this little thing here. If you can get one cheap enough, Somebody sold me this because they had no use for it. It was given to them as a gift. And it came with 20 sheets of paper, um, a pack of film, which I'm not going to use, but I'll have to have a look around and see if I can either A, sell it or send it on to a fellow photographer. And come with a chart. And it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So yeah, if you can find one cheap, give it a go. Or make your own. Make your own pinhole camera. Get yourself some photography paper. And give it a go. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. Keep in mind you have to do this in a makeshift dark room. Get yourself a red LED torch. Do not expose it to light in any way until after you've developed everything. So basically all I do is I use a toilet. <laughs> I use a red torch I bought from... Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below for the one that I'm using because it seems to work. And uh, yeah, a couple of trays, coffee, soda crystals, vitamin C, and some salt water to hopefully make the images last. So far, these images haven't got any worse over time using the salt water method. But years down the line, I'm not too sure. But if you're worried about that, then just buy the proper film chemicals and do it that way. But, you know, if you're on a tight budget and you want to do it for a bit of fun, developing paper negatives with caffeinol, give it a go. So I hope you enjoyed this video and hope to see you next time. Bye bye for now.